Recent research has shown the existence of a terrestrial exoplanet circling the nearby star Proxima Centauri in its habitable zone. With an orbital period or year of 11.2 Earth days, it has a mass that is around 30% greater than that of our planet. Could it possibly have a climate? Its surface might contain liquid water. How long does a day last? What's the current weather like over there? Can we now use a telescope to see it up close? What about later on? Let's find out. Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today we'll be taking a look at what this new exoplanet with a water world could be that astronomers just found. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. Tides that move the oceans twice daily on Earth are hundreds of times weaker than those on planets like Proxima Centauri b. A recent simulation revealed that the tidal pull of Proxima Centauri b's host star has little effect on weather or long-term climate, despite the fact that the force of those tides pulls on the planet's atmosphere as well. Instead, the fact that half the planet is permanently in the day and the other half is permanently in the night seems to be the driving force behind the weather on Proxima Centauri b and other worlds in the habitable zones of red dwarf stars. Proxima Centauri and TRAPPIST-1 are examples of red dwarf stars that are smaller, fainter, and colder than the Sun. Because they are significantly closer to their stars than we are to our Sun, planets like Proxima Centauri b and TRAPPIST-1e experience the gravitational pull of their stars much more intensely than we do. Because it is closer to Earth, the Moon produces more tidal force than the Sun. Furthermore, tides can move air in addition to pulling on the sea. However, despite the fact that the Moon's tidal influence noticeably moves our oceans daily twice, it has little effect on our atmosphere. The influence of heat, or the lack of it, overwhelms what little air movement the Moon might possibly be credited with. The tidal pulls on the atmosphere of planets that orbit red dwarf stars could be up to 500 times stronger than that of the Earth's atmosphere on planets that are possibly habitable. Proxima Centauri b may be approaching the maximum amount of tidal force that a planet can withstand while still maintaining a solid surface. Thomas Navarro and his colleagues from McGill University's Department of Planetary Science have conducted a computer research to show that even Proxima Centauri b's severe tides have little impact on the planet's weather or climate. According to their most recent work, gravitational tides on planets orbiting red dwarf stars only minimally alter their surface meteorology with little to no impact on their climate. A digital model of an Earth-like planet orbiting a low-mass star like Proxima Centauri was created by Navarro and his colleagues. This model was evaluated under various atmospheric conditions and other scenarios. As it turned out, Proxima Centauri b's tidally locked relationship to its star has a significant impact on the planet's climate. In other words, the planet spins once for each orbit around the star, resulting in permanent daylight on the same side of the planet that is always facing the star. By modeling the atmospheres of tidally locked planets surrounding stars like Proxima Centauri, Navarro and his colleagues built on the work of earlier investigations, the researchers included tides in their new model to investigate what might be different because no one has previously focused on the impact of tides on the atmosphere. The conclusion was that there wasn't much, although exoplanets that orbit red dwarfs still experience some extreme weather. One of the main factors is how windy it is. The star continuously heats the permanent day side, which leads to an area of low pressure as the hot air rises and expands. According to the models, wind rushes in from the cool, dark night side at a speed of 35 to 70 km per hour. That implies that a powerful wind ranging from a strong breeze to a violent gale blows continuously toward the same location on the day side across the entire planet's surface. According to Navarro, you have all these breezes coming from the same direction all the time. Low pressure, a direct result of ongoing heat, is what generates the winds. Moreover, it is probably always stormy there on the day side, precisely beneath the faint red star in the sky. That is what you would anticipate from a low pressure area on Earth or even on a very dissimilar planet like Jupiter. A low pressure zone would likely provide dense cloud cover over a sizable portion of the day side, keeping conditions shadier than you might anticipate from something dubbed a permanent day side according to Navarro and his colleagues' model. This study indicates that tidal locking is a primary factor, determining the large-scale weather patterns on exoplanets near red dwarf stars. Previous research have projected how tidal locking might impact a planet's weather, but this one confirms that it is. 
the majority of the possibly habitable exoplanets that we're going to find will be circling red dwarf stars. Therefore, this is crucial information for astrobiologists. One reason is that around 75% of the stars in our galaxy are red dwarfs. Red dwarfs have a distinct demographic edge since low mass stars appear to originate more frequently than more massive ones and they also survive for a considerably longer period of time. In addition, these smaller stars make it simpler for planet searchers to identify possibly habitable exoplanets than larger, brighter stars. The habitable zone of a red dwarf is much closer to the star than the habitable zone of our solar system, which starts roughly at the orbit of Venus and ends just outside the orbit of Mars. The habitable zone of a red dwarf is the region around a star where temperatures are suitable for liquid water to exist. Likewise, a small planet is simpler to spot the closer it is to that star when searching for it. If we want to comprehend how and where life might form and thrive on these worlds, it is crucial that we comprehend their environmental circumstances. That is assuming, of course, that Proxima Centauri b or any other Earth-like planet surrounding a red star actually possesses an atmosphere. Numerous red dwarf stars are notoriously erratic and capable of ejecting enormous amounts of radiation and charged particles into space. A nearby planet's atmosphere may be stripped away by that type of stellar weather, which would be very disastrous for any alien life. Over the coming months, the James Webb Space Telescope will be used by enormous groups of scientists to explore these exoplanets. They'll aim to measure Proxima Centauri b's atmosphere, look into the atmospheres of a few TRAPPIST-1 worlds, and determine whether or not a few other red dwarf exoplanets have atmospheres at all. Meanwhile, the James Webb Space Telescope has provided us with the first TRAPPIST-1 photos that have been verified. The star is one of astronomy's most sought-after targets because the planets in the TRAPPIST system are strong contenders for supporting life. The photographs are revolutionary in the level of detail they provide astronomers interested in studying TRAPPIST and learning more about it. They also signal an improvement in how we might generally examine stars. Given their scientific significance, probably all the more astounding that a Reddit user created these photographs. Proxima b can be considered a potential contender for habitable planet even if there is still a lot of research to be done. The analyses reach the conclusion that the existence of liquid water on the surface today cannot be ruled out. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel and leave a comment down below with your own thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.